right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Captain Jason O'Brien, J-O-B Fishing. So, I know I promised you guys earlier this year a full walkthrough of Daredevil, and uh, I've been absolutely crazy busy with charters and everything else, and the warehouses, which I'll show you guys later. Had a few blow days, so I'll take opportunity and show you guys and go through, and I'm gonna try to go as quick as I can. There is a lot of options, there's a lot of stuff. I'm not gonna take a lot of time going deep dive into a lot of the stuff. If you have any questions, uh, message me, leave a uh, comment below, and uh, or reach out to me uh, through email or give me a call, and I will be more than uh, happy to go through any questions that you have. So guys, this is a 2022 Weld Craft with a D, 300 Cutty King. It's a heavy gauge aluminum boat. It's manufactured in Washington State. We put on a lot of item option items at the manufacturer, as well as uh, items uh, from the, uh, the dealer itself. The dealer was Reed Yacht Sales out of Michigan. They were absolutely fantastic. Um, we did go through some supply chain, not gonna lie, some supply chain issues. However, the overall experience was, I mean, we, I couldn't have asked for anything more from Reed and from Renaissance, which is the parent company that owns Weldcraft. So starting off, um, we were able to get this boat. It was pretty much fabricated. So the only thing that we didn't have a choice on, there is an option on this boat to have a rub rail. So this here has the single, what they consider the single rub rail. It's, I think it's about five and a half, six inch big rub rail. Uh, the alternative is they have a dual. That's kind of the what I wanted, but it was already uh, past that part of fabrication. So, but from that point on, everything on this boat uh, was something that we either added and we had full choices and everything else. So obviously the first thing that it went into was paint. Uh, from there, uh, obviously we uh, wanted to have the J-O-B fishing colors. Uh, so we went with the burgundy and the uh, gray, almost like a Yamaha gray, which once we get inside the boat, you'll see we actually did that throughout. Uh, in addition to that, at the dealer level, we also had a bunch of graphics put on the boat that you'll see throughout the video. Uh, that was put on actually at the uh, dealer, Reed Yacht Sales. So, so let's, I guess we'll just start up at the very front of the boat. Starting off guys, what we have here is we, uh, we upgraded the anchor. It was originally supposed to be a 23 pound Lumar claw anchor. We went ahead, upgraded to uh, the 33 pound. In addition, it was supposed to be 25 foot of chain, 516. So we went ahead, put a full 50, and I think we have roughly 275 feet of 5 8 rope that's spliced in. So the anchor windlass is an actual, it's an easy six. Works fantastic. Uh, first time I've ever had an anchor system quite like this. It works beautiful. It has a front cleat here. Uh, this actually doubles off as a uh, anchor tie, so when you let out your uh, anchor road, uh, when you get to the rope, you can anchor off here, and that's your uh, board. So, looking up here at the bow, they got some sea deck covering some of the custom paint to keep it from scratching. We have a, I think this is like a 28 or 30 inch uh, Lumar hatch that goes into the, uh, the berth up here. We just have the brow, again, with the, the logos and what have you. So starting off at the top, we have the Fleur night vision camera. Then we have the Halo 24 Simrad. We've also added Simrad uh, IP cameras. So we've added one forward and there's one reverse. So going into the windshield itself, it's a forward leaning style, which reduces glare, which actually works quite well. It also has windshield wipers both sides. Well, and of course, we have this giant inch, I think it's an inch and a quarter tubing, inch and a half. It's very heavy duty, it's welded in, it doesn't rattle, it is pretty sturdy. So in addition, everything holding this part, the, the, uh, the radar arch and the floor, this was all custom made by a fabricator named Gorin through the uh, boat dealer, Reed Yacht Sales. All right guys, so now we're up on the roof. Obviously I pointed out we have a custom radar arch so coming over to here, this arch actually comes from Weldcraft from the factory as is. So on here, what we've added is we have the uh, Shakespeare Galaxies. 
We have an AIS VHF radio antenna, eight foot, and we also have the AM FM antenna over on the other side. Here we got the remote control striker spotlights. So we have one port and starboard. In behind, I'm sure you, won't, you can't see it from there, but in behind here we have a vest bar. Um, this is a Wi-Fi antenna, which also works as a, two, a 4G antenna. Uh, and then we actually have the 0.1 antenna for the Vespar system, which also has AIS and GPS uh, capability. Then we got over to here. If you look down below the, uh, the brow, there's the horn that came with the boat, and it's electric, traditional horn, boat horn. Uh, here, we wanted to go with a white powder coated Kallenberg air horn system. So inside the boat, there's a small co air compressor that will actually power the diaphragms on these horns. So originally guys, this, uh, this all around light anchor light was actually mounted in the back. Uh, but again, because of all the stuff that we did on this roof, this roof took a lot of design and engineering. Basically in a nutshell, we went ahead and we actually added a ton of equipment this was actually designed almost down to the half inch on spacing on everything that's is very thought out, but we wanted to make sure that we had enough room for the 10 foot Zodiac along with its outboard engine and still have room to have the rods and the Cisco fishing equipment and uh, all the radar arch, hence why Originally, we had this radar up on the actual arch. It was, I mean, it fit, but it wasn't, um, it wasn't. So that's why Goran went ahead and we moved this as far forward as we could and have it overhanging the brow. So that way it was giving us extra room. So we originally had a Simrad 0.1 antenna, which if anybody knows, yeah, this basically, when you're standing still out in the water, uh, what will happen with, uh, if you don't have a 0.1 antenna, your actual heading will actually start flip-flopping uh, because unless you have a forward momentum and you're getting that GPS signal, um, then you really, the, 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 the instruments doesn't know really which way you're facing. So what the problem was, because we have so many things, especially the antennas really close to that 0.1 antenna, in there, there's actually a magnetic compass that actually um, tells the instruments which direction we're pointing using magnetic compass. Unfortunately, because of all that, we ended up having to go to the Simrad GS75. The GS75, it's a, it's a more expensive module, uh, but what it does is instead of having a magnetic compass, it's using three different GPS modules and with radio towers and satellite, in, or, uh, satellite positioning, it's triangulating all three of those uh, inside of the actual device itself. So a couple advantages. One, you don't have to worry about magnetic interference, which obviously we got a ton of up here. Uh, two, it is super accurate. I don't remember the exact, you can look it up, GS75s, but it's super accurate, which also really helps when you're starting to use things like uh, the Hellmaster 3 sky hook fish, uh, fish points and drift points. So. Moving on from there, the only other thing we have on this arch is we have the Galaxy, uh, basically it's a Simrad XM uh, satellite receiver. So that's giving us the ability to pull in weather uh, into our multifunction displays and we'll show you that later. So moving down the roof line. So the boat comes with these uh, very sturdy handrails. So we've actually used a rail mount from Cisco. We have the pulley from Cisco uh, fishing systems along with electric reel uh, pulleys. So, but I got the oversized reels and I also had the uh, additional uh, uh, manual handles on just in case I had to do something and I burn a fuse and I don't have an extra. Uh, also coming here, we have another 0.1 antenna, but this is for the Yamaha system. So this would be more so for, uh, uh, in addition to all the other GPS modules, but this one here, uh, this one's more so for the Yamahas themselves. So your autopilot and what have you. We'll come to the actual cradles for the rib tender. So this here, um, originally we started off with these pods and once we got the boat and the weight and everything else, uh, Brent Reed and the guys, they just weren't happy with uh, how sturdy uh, the brackets were. So again, Gorin went ahead and fabricated these one piece 
heavy duty aluminum uh, cradles and he basically custom made them to the bottom of the uh, Zodiac 10 foot tender. And the nice thing is he's got it into a bracket that's screwed and, and actually bolted down through the roof and you're able to go ahead and undo a couple screws and these actually will slide off if you want to. Again, we have the second cradle. Over here, we have an Atkins Hoyle uh, crane system. So this is, uh, you know, obviously there's a bunch of different uh, David or cranes used to remove the tender. So this is what we use. It, it basically, it's hooked up there. It's in the stow position, but uh, if I let out the cable, I can actually elevate this arm to a 45 position. I use a bolt, put it through here. Uh, it's, you know, when, when we started, when I, when I was trying to figure out uh, a crane system. Well, you see a lot of these large cranes on bigger yachts and they're kind of bulky and I kind of, I, I really wanted something that kind of went with the entire aluminum uh, minimalist overbuilt vibe that this whole boat has. This here fit, this is a company out of Canada, uh, Kingston, I think Kingston, Ontario. And they make different davids and what have you for typically a lot of sailors. So it's a high-end david systems. Uh, this was uh, very simple. It's got a worn winch on it. I think it's a 2,000 pound, maybe 3,500 pound winch on just a regular steel cable. So the, the idea is, you know, obviously we have tie downs here. So when we're in motion, the boat is uh, used for ratchet straps to hold the boat down. Uh, when we get into a destination, uh, I just plug in a cord here which has a simple in and out on the cable. Uh, Matt went ahead at Reed, uh, basically custom built a uh, lifting harness that's specifically designed for the tender and the, the, the exact pick point. So um, surprisingly enough guys, I mean this is a nine and a half foot beam boat and with a nine foot bottom and when we go in when we pick this uh tender up and put it in the water it lists probably i would say five degrees maybe so it doesn't really list that much and uh, it's actually pretty simple to put the tender in and off and i think the overall weigh the tender is like 450 pounds with the motor and the gas and all the rest of the stuff that's actually in the boat so this here is an option that is put on by the manufacturer it's a 13 rod uh, rocket launcher that's been welded and uh, bolted to the actual roof itself. All right, guys. So, well, let's go to this. So the, what I just used. This here, again, is another option done by the manufacturer. It's just a uh, roof ladder that's uh, welded in to the sidewall of the cabin and the gunnel. So again, everything is just, everything on this boat I, I think, let me stop for a second. I think the very first time Alyssa and I went up to Michigan and we saw a white version of uh, this boat. And uh, I remember talking to my father on the phone after we went and saw it. And he said, you know, what's your impression? I said, that's it's one word, overbuilt. Everything on this boat from the day I saw it was so overbuilt that to me, that's why we went this route uh, for longevity maintenance and everything else and just you know i've been on a lot of different boats over the years and i absolutely just loved this from the very beginning how overbuilt and sturdy and just no corners cut high quality fantastic craftsman uh, i don't know if you're going to see it inside this video but if you look at all these weld joints i mean it, it's just the 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 skills that used that were used on the welding and everything. I mean, and I know that this isn't machine welded. It's all hand welded in Michigan or uh, Washington State. But it's just a fantastic boat. But anyway, just a little side caveat. So going back on, they use the AJR windows, marine windows. So far, I absolutely love them. They're very manual. Um, they they click in what have you. Uh, they all have screens, and we'll show you that when we get inside. Other than that, we have these all uh, large 11 inch welded cleats. We got one in the front. We have, we have a forward midship. We have a, a rear midship and then we have a, re uh, a rear transom cleat. So moving back here, this here is the um, actually the black tank pump out uh, and also another option put on at the manufacturer. This is the net holder and three additional 
uh, raw, uh, rocket launchers on the sides as well. So that's on both port and starboard. All right, guys, let's skip on back to the back of the boat where all the magic happens. So we put, we chose to put on the uh, Yamaha XTO offshore motors. They're 425 horsepower, naturally aspirated V8s with I think 17 inch props. And we also have in addition over on the side, we got a 25 horsepower uh, Yamaha four stroke kicker long shaft. So the reason why we end up going with this, again, I wanted something that was gonna be very reliable and uh, with the XTOs, they are naturally aspirated. So there's no turbos, there's no superchargers. Uh, they're just straight naturally aspirated V8s. And what you get with that is the, the believe it or not, the fuel economy on uh, cruising at around 38 miles per hour, uh, I'm getting around with both, I'm doing about 1.5, uh, 1.4 miles per gallon, which is for a boat of this size and weight and everything else is pretty good. So uh, originally these motors were supposed to come in gray because of supply chain issues, they came in white. So the solution to try to tie it in because the kicker motor only comes in the Yamaha gray. So they didn't have a version of white and there was at the time there was nothing really all white on the boat. So we decided, actually it was my father's like, well, why don't you just go ahead and get the Crowlings and all three pieces similar to a Mohawk. And uh, the guys at uh, Brent, uh, Brent Reed and the guys went ahead, they, they uh, took the three Crowlings, sent them out and had them custom painted and uh, had all brand new decals uh, uh, ordered and put on. And I think it uh, is unusual. However, I do think it, it's, uh, it solved an issue um, and it, it looks pretty cool, I think. It turned out really, really well. So back here, obviously guys, I think it's like a 34 inch swim step and it's got a, an actual boarding ladder that's all solid aluminum. Um, the only other thing as far as, let me go back to the engine. So, because it's gonna be more important when we get inside and we start looking at the helms understand that the two motors are completely fly-by-wire so other than some electrical cords and fuel all the steering is actually done in the motor itself um, so when you start talking about doing autopilots there's no hydraulics going to these engines so everything is done inside the motor so everything from your steering wheels to your throttles everything is all wired and electric going to these motors unlike the kicker the kicker has a C-Star hydraulic system. And when you get up into here, we'll, I'll show you. Uh, it has a separate autopilot system that's using hyd hydraulic pump. So we went with an AP, uh, Simrad AP44 with a NAC3 controller, which again, we went with a NAC3 just because uh, it's a little, basically it's overkill for a boat of this size. However, because of supply chain, it's what we could get. So the kicker is on a completely different uh, autopilot system. So there's an autopilot system for the big engines and there's a separate autopilot that also has a Bluetooth and a wireless remote control that controls that as well. So moving forward, I'm trying to go through this. I'll keep going as fast as I can. So again, uh, we got a live well here. Uh, we had uh, Reed go ahead and put a baffle in it. I think it's like just shy of 60 inches long. It's probably 18, 22 inches deep. It's absolutely monstrous of a uh, live well. So during the summer, I end up putting freezer blocks on the bottom, dry ice blocks from Arctic ice. And then I put about, uh, I think 40 pounds of ice on there and that keeps us good and for the entire eight hour day. And then also, this has been converted at the actual factory as an option to go ahead and use it as a live well. So it's got a live well feed and uh, drain as well on this. I added a tape measure to, uh, in front of it. Here we have basically a tuna door that goes back to thing. It's got a latch, it's magnetic, but you can walk out here onto the swim step and get back to your ladder. I'll come back over to this side because it's pretty much duplicated. We have our fuel. Uh, the boat, um, the boat primarily, uh, it, uh, it has 225 gallons of, uh, I use 92 octane at the marina, uh, ethanol free. Uh, there is a diesel tank on the boat. Uh, I think it's eight or 10 gallons, but that is primarily for the stove, which is a Wallace uh, heater slash stove cooktop. It's a glass top that uses uh, the uh, diesel uh, fuel. 
So coming forward, there's a whole bunch of Cisco uh, fishing system stuff on this boat, and we'll, I'll try to go through it real quick. So I have the three foot stationary downriggers from Cisco. Absolutely love them. They're simple. They don't have all the, uh, the automatic digital stuff, but they're just, I mean, to me, it suits the boat. And it's almost like they were designed specifically for a boat of the, uh, this design. So it's very minimalistic, but it works fantastic. The motors work great. So back down here, they had a um, plug-in added so I can add, uh, remove these if I need to. Uh, in addition to that, so what I did was, I, being that I had a 12 volt outlet here, I created a cord. It comes back basically through the gunnel and comes down here. So during the fishing trips, uh, so during charters, I use this Kong cooler. It's a uh, 70 quart cooler. I put the freezer box in here. Customers can put their drinks and uh, lunches or what have you if we're doing executive lunches. We put it on, in here. Now, when we go on uh, trips, this comes out and we have a Dometic fridge freezer combo. I think it's like the 95 quart, uh, but it's got two lids. Uh, the nice part about it, it runs off of 120 and it also runs off of 12 volt. And the, and the other nice thing about it is uh, it's, it's just a hair bigger than this as far as depth wise concerned. But it, with the two lids, you have the option to have fridge, fridge, freezer, fridge, or both freezers, whatever you need for the trip. So that typically gets slid up and we have the option to run two different powers. So over here, we have some more controls. That's the macerators guys, that noise. And what that is, these are fish kill boxes. Uh, they basically run from that back wall to somewhere right about here. So, and they're about this wide and they're, I don't know how deep, but uh, what we, so obviously we're not out doing uh, uh, Pacific Northwest style fishing, giant tuna and halibut and salmon. Um, if we were, this would be a great because this has got a, a built-in macerators on both sides. I typically use it for, um, I put my big boards in here. I got six fenders covered, um, uh, 10 inch fenders for the boat. We did add these. We had the uh, Reed Yacht Sales put these spring catches on because these doors are pretty heavy. And being that they're all aluminum, if you had your foot in here and this comes down on it, you might be missing a few toes. So, <laughs> so we had this put on just mainly for safety reasons. So while I have this open, so what I did was, let me close this for a second. Okay, so what I did was, obviously you guys have seen this on the Lund. It's just a uh, Tango BH6 uh, inline board here. So when I'm trolling, on this boat anything below 1.8 miles per hour i typically go to the inline boards now on these inline boards because all the rods on this particular on the on the on my charter boat are all running braided line so i have the sam the sam clip or 39 on all all six of uh well, actually all 12 of these boards now the beauty is i have it i don't know if you can see this so can you uh, zoom in on this a little bit? So this is called a V-Lock system. It's made uh, by uh, Boat Outfitters. And what you have is, and I'll come up here. So what you have here is they come with these plates where you could drill, thread them, and put other things on them. So the beauty behind this is um, they have plates that are on angles. If you had a cutting board that you wanted V-channels in and put the board up above your live well, or boxes, or I think Melissa was looking at a cheese and wine table that could clip into this. So the nice thing is I have the B Tango BH6 in here, so I can just quickly drop this in if I'm, we're uh, slow trolling in colder waters, or if we're using the big boards and going over 1.8 miles an hour, again, there's that same plate. And what I did was take a piece of starboard, I put two little bins, they have drains in the bottom. They're all wet, but. Anyway, so and these fit right in here and it's locked in. Now, what I do on the big boards is I'll have the uh, clippers, the orange clippers by Amish, where I have them in there along with my uh, red bands. And once I have the lines going out, 
I have them right there and I'm setting up all my lines. Yeah, this works really great. I mean, you can have this set up, this V, this V lock. It's, it's a really cool system and it's super sturdy. Uh, you can have things like wine and cheese tables or beer holders or what anything you want to mount on your boat that you have access to be able to pull this little clip and then just remove it and then put whatever you want in there. So let's go back again. So on the top here, we have the Cisco. I think this is a 72 inch uh, track. It's got the cutaway so that I can uh, not only take the parts off and on at the, at, the, at the ends, but I have the ability to take them off if I wanted to put uh, cradles or long cradles or what have you in here. So here we have the Cisco tool holder. This is where the pliers, scissors, split ring pliers, uh, temporary hooks and whatever is sitting there. Uh, this here is a cup holder made by Cisco. I primarily keep my Procure in here along with my offshore tackle, little guppy weights if I'm using the inline boards. Or if I got people on the boat that uh, they're just drinking beer, I'll take all that out for them and let them use it as a cup holder. But, so I have eight uh, tube Cisco rod holders. Again, another cup. Coming back over to here, uh, from the manufacturer, they have these uh, uh, holders here. I have the deck brush on this side. On the other side, I have the cabin brush, and I also have a boat pole, uh, docking pole. Uh, the boat has, does have a uh, wash down system, raw water pump. And down here, I have it mounted where I have the shark downrigger balls, and they actually have their own little mounting spot there. I think I have can't remember i think there might be 12 pound sharks for the cannonballs all right guys so continuing on so inside the gunnels here we have they're open so you can go ahead and put pliers and what have you in there and uh, fishing tackle this bed this seat this actually folds down and it's got sea deck on it so you can use it as a seat or when you're uh, uh coming in or leaving the boat and they have that on both sides so uh in addition to that so up here what I had made was um, the guy uh, Dave over at Cisco went ahead and uh, I had this uh, C cleat, which is more of like a sailing type uh, cleat. Um, the nice thing is with this, it's a single handed. This is for the big board. So it's my retrieval line. So if the line's coming off of that front pulley at the, the uh, bow of the boat, I just clip this on the line and then I have it where I can actually pull it in or let it go. Um, and that's just basically my retrieval line to put the clips on and off the uh, the big board line okay so i'll just continue with this side of the boat before i go back so going up you got more grab rails here here and here uh, we have led lighting um, for the cockpit there's one on both sides i'm going to move over to the side here this here is part of the actual uh, atkins and hoyle uh, the uh, crane david system Originally, this tube here was supposed to go all the way into the flooring and anchor there. But what uh, Reed Yacht Sales and Gorin, what they went ahead, they actually fabricated this solid aluminum piece here to have it anchored in. And what that does is it gives us ability to slide uh, any type of coolers in here if we're trying to get more space in the back. Um, Gorin and Reed Yacht Sales went ahead and they actually fabricated all the speaker housing uh, by hand. One of the cool things that I absolutely love is what they did was they actually fabricated as part of the speaker housing this little module on the side. And what this is, is the switch that actually controls the in and out on the, uh, the Cisco outriggers. So that's uh, instead of having an, a, a, an external box, it's just nicely, neatly integrated inside the Rockford Phosphate speakers themselves. So coming across, we got more but. Here's another one of the Simrad IP cameras in the back. So it basically does the whole uh, rear in 4K. The door itself, real heavy duty, solid um, door. It's got a locking flap in there. So it doesn't, when you're underway, you're not smashing anybody's fingers. We have our throw ring, uh, of course, Got our uh, boat name on there. Over here, guys, we have a hatch. Over here, we got a couple of the, uh, all the batteries on the boat were upgraded. 
uh, to the uh, AGM31 Odyssey 100 amp hour batteries. They're dual purpose. They're uh, the same ones that are basically in the one. So they're dual purpose. So they're deep cycle and starting batteries. So uh, I know we have two house batteries. We got two or three batteries for the motors. And then we have two batteries up front that uh, basically are dedicated to the uh, um, the anchor winch and all the equipment, including the Cisco outriggers on the uh, on the roof as well. So we had all those. We have the uh, Pro Mariner uh, charging onboard charging for it. So when we're plugged up into uh, shore power or we have the generator on, uh, those uh, battery chargers go ahead and charge it up. That was another thing. I'm just uh, so the other really nice thing about the offshore motors. Just remembered. Uh, the alternators are absolutely giant on those engines. And one of the really, really cool parts of it is even at idle, the amount of amps that uh, to, on the recharge is phenomenal. It's probably one of the uh, best uh, alternate, uh, alternators on any outboard engine out there. So here, again, we have access to the back bilge. Um, there's a lot of stuff in here. We have the NAC3 controller. We have access to the water fuel separated rake cores, which we upgraded to. Um, there's other pumps in here. We have the um, uh, fuse buses in here, as well as the battery, the uh, remote controlled uh, battery cutoff switches that are controlled up at the front helm. Those are all back here. You got a bunch of other fuses and what have you. Uh, you have access to the bilge pumps. Uh, on the, the boat came with three bilge pumps, one in the stern, uh, mid, and uh, bow. Uh, in addition to that, we went ahead, just for safety reasons, we went ahead and put an additional uh, pump in here that actually on a float switch, and they're all, all four of the, uh, the bilge pumps are on automatic float switches as well. But just uh, pretty much all the behind the scenes stuff has full access to it right there. In here, on this panel here, which I ended up putting some screws in, uh, but uh, just to keep it more watertight, uh, in here is the Westerbeek 5 kilowatt generator. So far, it's been working fantastic. So uh, you have access to your cords through this. This is the magnet to hold the door. Uh, you, again, you got your 12 volt uh, system for your downrigger. Over here, we got the boat pull, we got a boat brush, we have an additional, um, oh, geez shark 12 pound cannonball weight for the cisco and it came with the holders so they say put we got the shore power package uh i'm going to switch spots with you one more time oh other thing we did guys we uh, after we had everything mounted we went ahead and uh, we had c deck put on all the way around to uh, prevent anybody with zippers or any type of metal scratching the red. So we put these uh, bolt, basically bolsters, uh, added that to match the boat. So coming back over to here again, we have another retrieval line over on this side. We got the light, we got the speaker, we got the switch for the star, uh, starboard side downrigger or outrigger. Over here, we have another step stool. And then over here, what we have is the shore power, which was an option at the manufacturer. So we have shore power uh, package. Uh, one of the things uh, Reed Yacht Sales did for us was uh, we have obviously the water tanks and what have you that I'll go through here in a little bit, but I also wanted shore water. So like a city water thing. So what you do is you can hook directly into your water here and instead of using your uh, onboard uh, pump, uh, it pressurizes the system and bypasses the sink, or uh, the uh, actual, the uh, water tanks. So you have uh, fresh water uh, on demand when you're at a uh, slip. The, the rear helm. So first thing is, obviously you can see we have a lot going on in this rear helm. Uh, Reed Yacht Sales had to spend a lot of time with uh, Goran designing this rear helm to make sure that everything I needed on here was back here. because. Obviously when I'm running charters, I'm operating the boat from here along with, uh, typically I do not have a first mate. Melissa is only here during the weekend. So I have, to have, I have to be able to control all the lines and control the boat. And then this is how we do it. So we have a 16 inch uh, Samrad NSS Evo 3S back here. And it has all the same functionality as the ones in the front helm. Uh, this here is actually 
uh, a Bluetooth receiver. So that is tied into the NAC3 AP44 system. So using the small little remote, I control the autopilot system. So going back guys to, let's talk about the engine. So like I said earlier, the big engines are all fly by wire and the kicker is hydraulic. Okay, so here, let's just do a quick overview. So the thing, the, so the throttles are for the large engine. The steering wheel is for the large engine. Uh, the joystick is for the large engine. And then you have your Yamaha CL5 engine data uh, monitor here. So the, again, for the large XTOs. When it comes to the kicker engine, you have the start here, key. This is the throttle for the kicker. Um, ooh, let me get this off here. So over here, we have an iTroll, which was really nicely flush mounted into this dash. Uh, and this controls the throttle on the kicker. Uh, and then this is the AP44 um, autopilot by Simrad that controls only the kicker. So like I said earlier, guys, it has two different autopilot system. One will fly by wire, the other one hydraulic. So what happens here is this comes with a remote control that goes through this Bluetooth module. So I can use it anywhere on the boat and actually uh, control the actual Simrad AP44 anywhere I go. So in addition to the, all the transducers on the back, and it's funny because we have, I can't remember, I think there's like four large transducers at the back in between the two large engines. We got the Airmar one kilowatt, T, uh, T, I think it was a, a TH-185 or TM-185. And then we have the transducer for the, we have a Fishhawk system. Uh, so we have the 4XD that goes down with the, uh, and it's got a module on the, or the, uh, transducer on the back giving us surface temps uh, surface water speed and it also talks down to the actual uh, mechanism that's at that at the ball itself so i have all the fish hawk data as well here coming over this is the wireless uh, vhf ais this is the cortex vespar cortex m1 system this is your uh, wireless vhf the other one in the front helm is wired but this here, this cradle actually charges the uh, VHF radio when it's in, uh, stowed away. Going through this, obviously this is the ignition for the kicker. We got some USB ports here. In addition, I got more USB charging ports over on the side here. Um, this here is a actual, the, uh, uh, basically it's a power switch that kick, basically turns on the AP44, the iTroll, uh, the Fishhawk, Basically everything that's uh, related to the kicker is uh, actually powered here. So you can turn it all off all at once. Here we have the uh, actual uh, um, the autopilot system for the Yamaha XTOs. And then we have the start stop buttons uh, individual. You got your safety switch for the main and you got your safety switch for the kicker. Now, I don't know if I mentioned it. So one of the things was getting everything here on this helm, the original helm uh, from the manufacturer was the width of this cabinet coming up to about that high. So obviously, uh, Reed Yacht Sales and Gorin went ahead and fabricated this entire new uh, uh, rear helm um, and, and basically designed it to the perfect size to be able to fit everything we have on this uh, rear helm. So underneath here, inside this cabinet, uh, we got a 3D structure scan. We got a couple more fuse panel or buses in here. Uh, we also have that shadow caster, uh, the marine LED controllers that basically sync up and are controlled through the MFDs. So typically guys, I'll go ahead and uh, I'll have my uh, Plano boxes that I'm using for the day here. The rest of all my tackle are pretty much in that uh, spare room or uh, storage area. So here you have full access to everything that's inside the helm. It's pretty easy to get to. Again, it's just, again, a solid aluminum door with uh, weather stripping all the way around. And of course, lockable. Uh, we added a, a second uh, fire extinguisher on the side.